But go get yourself a microphone, any microphone, so that you can get in a booth. And here we go. <laughs> oh man, I blew the line. <laughs> get yourself a microphone so that you can get in a booth, so that you can get. Oh, I'm so tired. What is happening, boot junkies? Oh man, is it good to be with you in the booth today? I am so so happy to be here, and we've got a we got a cool we got a cool bit of comparison uh, coming up in this video. We're going to compare a number of currently priced at three hundred and ninety nine dollar dynamic microphones. So if you're in the market for your your forever mic for your podcast for your for your stream. For your voiceover work, if you're looking for a dynamic microphone to help in the, the space that you're in, I've got the shootout for you. I have got the comparison for you right now. We're going to primarily focus on, we're going to compare everything to this microphone right here. This is the Shure KSM-8 dynamic microphone. And I want to give a great big thank you to the folks at Sweetwater for sending this microphone to me. I think it's on sale during the uh, 2020 holiday season. Uh, this mic is is got a good discount going on it right now. And the folks at Sweetwater wanted to make sure uh, that the word got out. And so they sent the microphone to a, a number of different reviewers, myself included. And they asked it asked us to, to review it, give it a fair shake, see how it compares to things. So that's what I'm doing. The folks at Sweetwater... Don't get to see this beforehand. I'm not compensated by them. I get to keep the microphone, but I'm not compensated by them. They don't get any editorial input into it. They just sent me the mic and said, would you make a, a video about it? Absolutely. So that out of the way, they don't have any editorial impact in, input or anything like that. It makes no difference to me. If you love the mic or hate the mic, it really doesn't make any difference to me. I just want you to experience it and get to hear it and see if it's one that you might would, might be interested in. So trying to keep it fair, trying to keep it fair for everybody. Okay. The reason, so what we have here is talking about this microphone, we're going to compare it to a couple of other microphones that are currently at the same price. This microphone is made by Shure. This is the KSM-8. We're going to compare it to one of its siblings. This is the Shure SM7B. These are two dynamic microphones. Really, a lot of podcasters use the SM7B, um, and we're going to see if it's uh, see what the differences are between them. We will also include the Electro Voice RE20 in the comparison, so you'll get to hear that too to see how this compares. All three microphones right now. As when I looked at them today, they are all priced on Sweetwater at $399. So this is really going to be to see if you feel like any of these are the right one for you, which I hope one of them is if you're in the market for a dynamic microphone. Okay, so let's start with the comparison be between these two. When you see the, the text on the screen here uh, with the mic with the name of the microphone, that's the microphone you're listening. So as it goes back and forth, you'll be able to hear what the differences in sound are. So if one feels more preferable to your ears, you'll be able to decide which one that is. So right now, we'll start with a price. As I said, this is $399. Now, this microphone is typically $499. Right now, it's about $100 off which makes it uh, a pretty good deal. This is what probably in the top two or three ish of Shure's sort of premium dynamic mics, the 7, 7B being one of them. And there's also a KSM9, um, which is another premium that, that costs a little bit more than costs a little bit more than this. I think that's like five ninety nine dollars expensive dynamic microphone. The KSM-8 is designed to be handheld. So you can take this one out of its stand and you can hold it. So if you're on stage, you're going to have one of the best mics Shure can offer that you're using it on stage. It comes in a couple of different uh, finishes. It comes in the, sorry for the handling noise. It comes in this brushed nickel, uh, and it also comes in sort of a, a more of a matte black. So if you want it to be really prominent and visible, or if you'd like it to be a little bit more stealthy, you can choose either one. Um, Curtis Judd reviewed this microphone recently on his channel, and he has the uh, the black one, the, the matte colored one. So if you want to see what it looks like, uh, pop over to, uh, to Curtis's channel and see his review of this microphone, and you'll be able to hear how it compares on his voice also. So why might you choose the KSM-8 
over the SM7B. When, why might you choose either one of them in either cases? Well, the, uh, the KSM8 is, to my ears, it's a hotter microphone. What does that mean? It means that the microphone itself sends a louder signal to the recorder, given the same level of gain on your preamps. So before the video started, I tried to set my preamplifiers so that both of these microphones will send the same signal onto disc, the same loudness. I, I send a tone into the microphone and then I look at that tone and I try and uh, get all my preamplifiers set. As a result, the 7B needs to be at a higher preamplifier setting. That can typically mean that the underlying hiss gets louder, so the inherent noise within the microphone can be a little bit louder. If your preamplifiers are noisy, it can be a little bit louder. The underlying hiss may be more present as the preamplifier gets turned up. The 7B is a notoriously gain-hungry microphone, which means that on your interface, on your preamplifier, you'll need to turn it up higher than most other microphones in order to get sufficient signal out of it. So the real specification that I, I like to talk about when we're talking about microphones is the frequency response and the frequency response curve for the, for the microphone. The KSM-8 has no buttons, no switches, nothing like that. Um, it is just set the way it's set, and the engineer can make some adjustments to it equalizer-wise, but um, as far as the, the talent behind the microphone, you don't have anything to adjust on this microphone. It is sort of pre-equalized to work well on stage and to be a good-sounding microphone in most situations. The 7B, being a studio mic, um, does have some additional buttons and switches that you can adjust. Get my uh, get a tool out here. Um, the 7B has two switches, which you can see on the back. And let's let's make a comparison of those switches on the back of the microphone to see how the sound difference compares. So, in my experience, the KSM8 tends to be a less bassy sounding. Um, it, it has less bass response. So. As we go back and forth, you should notice that the SM7B tends to be a little bit more bassy. And I think what the, what's what's going on in the uh, KSM8, one is to get rid of a rumble, to not interfere with the instruments if you are on stage. Uh, but also it's got some built in, it's got these two diaphragms, this dual dyne configuration, so that as you get closer to the microphone, it does not display as much proximity effect. So let me demonstrate that. So as I come right up onto the SM uh, to the KSM8, you should see that my voice does get a little bit bassier, but it doesn't really change that much as I come into and move off the microphone. The tone of my voice really doesn't change. We'll compare it to the SM7B. So as I come over to the 7B and I go right up to the windscreen and I move back off the windscreen, how does my voice change? Does it change in timbre? Does it get even bassier? There's a tendency for microphones, especially for the cardioid pattern microphones, to become bassier as you move closer to the microphone itself, uh, and that's called the proximity effect. Sometimes it sounds great, and other times you don't want that in there, especially if your performance includes moving uh, closer to and farther from the microphone. You may not want that proximity effect uh, because then you have to you you want to take some of that bass out. So the KSM it naturally tries to have to remove that tendency in the microphone itself. On the 7B, that's really done with a switch with the bass roll off switch or a high pass filter. So I'm going to switch, I'm going to move the mic and I'm going to switch that on now. I don't know if the camera will pick it up, but you can see that there's a little graph on the back and on the, on the bass side, it now shows. A, a downward slope, a downward curve, and that is the high pass filter. It normally removes the bass, so as you get closer to the microphone now, it may not change from a bassy perspective because you've just taken the bass, a lot of the bass, out of the microphone. And it actually, I'm not sure how it will sound, you'll be able to, we'll, we'll listen afterwards, but it should maybe even sound perhaps a, lit, a, a bit less bassy than the KSM-8. 
because that filter is taking away even more bass than the, than the KSM-8. So we'll go uh, proximity effect, get nice and close to the KSM-8, and we'll go proximity effect really close to the 7B to see how that sounds. Now, the other thing I hear when I've listened to the, these two microphones side by side, by side, side, by side is the KSM-8 sounds brighter. The, uh, it's just a, a more bright, more present microphone. And the frequency response curve shows that um, on the higher end, when the, the, the microphone is set in the 7B's default flat setting, that the KSM is a brighter microphone. Let's switch the, uh, let's switch the high uh, frequency boost on the 7B just to see how it changes. Okay, so now this microphone, now the 7B, is set with the bass rolled off and the high frequencies boosted a bit. And now you'll be able to see, I think that this is as close as the 7B would sound to the, to the KSM-8. They probably still don't sound exact. I'm hearing them both in my head. It's, it's hard for me to tell. Uh, but you should see if there's any sort of difference. This would be as close as I think they would be to sounding the same. The SM7B does some have, have some additional switches so that you can customize the sound. So this is an example as we get closer to the KSM-8 and we get closer to the 7B from a proximity effect. So uh, a lot of times if you see in po podcasts, they want the guest, they want the host to be really close to the microphone to try and get the, the highest signal out of the voice. So now you get to hear them both. Now, what I'll also do is I'll do just the, the one last configuration on the 7B. And that is to put the bass back in and keep the high frequency boosted. So now this sounds should sound like a very present, full microphone. Again, KSM-8 doesn't change. The 7B just has these different configurations. My experience with the 7B is you find a setting that you like and you sort of set it and forget it. You're often not switching these over and over again in the back. In fact, when you buy the microphone, there's a plate that you can actually have to cover those settings so that nobody else can mess around with them once you get them set the way you like. Um, I just never, I, don't, I think I've even lost my back plate because I've never put it, I've never put it on. But that's an example of the KSM-8 versus the 7B. After I have gone through and tried to match the gain so have the preamplifier set differently so that the microphones sound the same. Okay, so now we have in place the Electro Voice RE20, another extremely popular podcasting dynamic microphone. You see a lot of podcasters, you see this microphone in a lot of radio studios. Very popular microphone. Sounds great for voice also. Sounds different from the SM7B. And for a long time, there were two choices really in... That's not really true, but there's uh, these two microphones, the 7B and the RE20, are two very um, popular choices for radio studios, for podcasting studios, because they're both really good sounding microphones. They have two two different sounds, so you find one that that is sort of preferable to your ear for your voice, and you can have them both. Uh, you can choose between them both. Um, it's really it really comes down to a function of choice. This microphone also right now is $399 when I checked it on Sweetwater. Um, so again, price parity. One of the big differences for the RE20 is, is so many of our podcasters are also doing video podcasts. And while the microphone is part of the set and it's, you know, I'm not really one who cares about the look of the microphone. If you do have a microphone that's going to be in your picture, you might, if the uh, uh, quality being the same, if you can have a microphone that's better looking, then maybe that's something to consider. I think the KSM-8 is of the microphones, especially in this in this brush nickel, in this silver finish. I think it's the, the handsomest of the microphones. The RE20 definitely has a, a very industrial look to it. Both of these microphones um, say they handle the proximity effect well. So the, um, the RE20 has something called variable D, whereas the KSM-8 has something called dual dyne. Um, and they're both different technologies in order to try and manage the proximity effect. So first we'll go over to the RE20 and we'll get right up onto that, right up onto it um, to just get a sense of the proximity effect to see if it changes the, the tone of my voice. This is with the microphone set in its flat position, so still having as much bass in my voice as the microphone can provide. 
and we'll compare it to the KSM-8 to see if there's a, a difference with the proximity effect. And again, in this kind of case, you the, the microphone is trying not to change the tone, the tonal quality of my voice as I get closer to the microphone itself. It hopefully is staying the same. That's what the design of these microphones are for. You can help it a little bit more by switching on the bass roll-off switch uh, or the high-pass filter on the RE20. So if it does get bassier as you move closer to it, um, the high-pass filter can help take even more of that bassiness away. The muddiness, it tends to be, I say bassy, but really it's a, it's a muddy quality that can happen, especially with these dynamic microphones that as you get closer to them, that, that, uh, that can change. That can change. So that is an example of the KSM-8 and the RE20. Now, just for comprehensiveness sake, I'm going to take the, uh, the, um, the KSM-8 away just so you can hear in the same studio, in the same session, how the 7B and the RE20 compare. So let me do that now. I'll take the KSM-8 away and put the 7B next to the RE20. All right, one second. Okay, so this is one last test just to do a quick comparison between the SM7B itself and the RE20 just to round it out so that you can hear the example of the difference between them. Now, I went back and I, I EQ'd, the, uh, I set the preamps so that uh, they should hopefully have a similar signal level. Um, and also I've set both of these microphones back to flat. So now you can hear sort of an apples to apples comparison between these two microphones. Again, these are on price parity at the moment. The SM7B is on, it's $399. I think that's the always price for the 7B. The, my experience with the RE20 is it's a bit on a discount. Again, looking at the prices on Sweetwater, uh, because that's who sent me the mic. So we're going to talk all about Sweetwater. Um, I do find that the uh, normally the RE20, I think, is a bit more expensive, but it is on sale right now for $399. So, and I think that's through the end of the holiday season here in the United States for 2020. Now, let me go back and just for just run them through the all, always. I'm going to switch on the bass. Uh, bass roll off the high pass filter on the RE20 and set the high pass filter on the 7B. So now these both have their base taken away. So as you get closer to it, that proximity effect hopefully should not be too prominent for e either one of them. They should not hopefully change the tonality of my voice between the two, uh, between the not too between the far away and the close. They should um, hopefully not change too much because that bass is being removed um, in the microphone itself. Now, just for the one last setting, let's turn the high, uh, the high, the high frequency boost on on the seven B. Okay, so this is one last test that compares the high frequency boost of the seven B with. The RE20. Now they both still have their their high pass filter turned on, so they both do have the bass boost, uh, the bass cut uh, taken out of the of the microphone. So they should be less bassy. So as you get closer for the proximity effect, there still should be no bass, but they should be at least the 7B should be a little bit brighter. I will now switch the uh, high pass filter off, so now you get the bassiness back of the RE20. and I've turned the high pass filter off on the 7B. So now the 7B should be bassiest. Lots of different configuration options, lots of different options when it comes to a dynamic microphone for your podcasting, for your voiceover, for your stream, whichever you like. There's lots of different options at that 399 sweet spot. And I really do think that's the sweet spot. You can spend more, but for a dynamic microphone, there should not be much of a reason to go much higher than $399, $499. After that, I, it's diminishing returns. I've not experienced a dynamic microphone that, you know, $1,000. When I think about my other microphones that I spend $1,000 on, like my MKH416, all my other condenser microphones, I got condenser microphones going up to $3,600. I would not spend more than, say, $400, $450 for a dynamic microphone because I think these are about as good as they can sound. Maybe there's a Neumann. Maybe there are some other ones out there that sound significantly better, but I really do think that 399 
is the sweet spot for really a premium sound when it comes to dynamic microphones. Been through it all today. Been through it all. All of the different configurations for these $399 microphones. Again, a great big thank you to Sweetwater for sending me the KSM-8 to use as the basis for this video. Really grateful for it. Thank you so much to Sweetwater. And uh, I'll have links to all the microphones down below. They will be, be, they will be affiliate links, just in full disclosure, because that helps me uh, support the channel. Uh, but it uh, doesn't change. doesn't change your price. Thanks so much for sticking with me. If you made it this far, thank you so much for sticking with me. Now, go get yourself a microphone. One of these dynamic microphones. Maybe a really good looking silver one like that. Man, I just love the way that looks. I just love the way that microphone looks. But go get yourself a microphone, any microphone, so that you can get in a booth and you recover. <laughs> oh man, I blew the line. <laughs> get yourself a microphone so that you can get in a booth, so that you can get. Oh, I'm so tired. Go get yourself a microphone so that you can get in a booth and you can record something amazing. I know you can do it. Thanks so much for listening, and I'll talk to you next time. Take care.